Hey everyone, welcome to video 12. This is part 3 of a figure painting process that we started way back in video 4. And uh, since then we got a bit sidetracked with uh, the M54 truck build. But it's now time to finish this guy. You'll recall that in video 4 we painted his face using uh, oil colors. And uh, now it's time to finish his uniform. You'll notice that in this video I'm not giving you a list of steps for the simple reason that I move between steps so much that it's difficult to really give you a set recipe. This is definitely not the method of painting olive drab uniforms, it works well for me. So what I'll be doing is showing you the basic colors, the base colors and the way I approach highlights and shadows and uh, hopefully that helps you in your own work. The first thing to do is to protect the painted skin surfaces, the head and the arms and the hands with a durable clear coat. I like using Microscale's Micro Flat. Next I'll be using Liquid Mask from uh, Ammo Mic just to protect the painted head and arms. And uh, this is essential because we'll be using some airbrush coloring um, for the next few steps and of course we don't want to ruin the paint that we just spend so much time uh, applying. The stuff goes on very easy. I use a disposable paintbrush, one that I can throw away and when this stuff dries you'll see it sort of discolors to a more of a darker blue and uh, it's easy to peel off. Guys just make sure that this stuff is fully dried before you try to peel it off otherwise you just end up rubbing it into the figure. From reference pictures you can clearly see that the olive drab uniforms worn during the war became very dull and almost sort of beige and brown shades as, um, as they aged in the jungle environment and for this I'm using Vallejo's Russian uniform green. This is applied with an airbrush. Uh, we've already primed this figure earlier so I spray from the top down and uh, this will be my base color. With that done, we can now move on to the next step. To apply some highlight green tones, I'll be using Golden Olive. And uh, again, we'll be doing precision airbrush work. And for that, I turn the pressure on my compressor way down low. You can, uh, of course, experiment with this. Basically, you need to be able to draw a pencil line with your airbrush. I now apply the Golden Olive color to the, the back, the shoulders, and also the upper thighs and you can see there we've got this lighter color very lightly applied uh, with the airbrush and this will be a highlight green tone. Next up is some shadow and for this I'm going to mix Russian uniform green with some black and this is now sprayed into all the shadow areas the lower legs, the back of the knees, the lower back as well as under his arms. It's a very subtle color change but uh, it is visible and it will help us with the next stages. Now we're on to brush painting and for this I'm using a wet palette from uh, Red Grass Games. I now use a brush and I start applying the darker color to all the folds in his uniform, all the seams, um, basically all the, all the shadow areas, the darker areas and uh, make sure to blend the paint properly with the uh, existing green on the uniform and of course this being a wet palette you can easily mix darker and lighter tones there you can see the result all the folds are now nicely accentuated the next step is to mix up a lighter color for this I use German camouflage beige and uh, again our Russian green and uh, mix a light green color and this will now uh, go on the on the uh, the highlight portions, the, the the areas on his knees. Think of a uh, light source shining directly from above. So the upper part of the knees and uh, all the folds. This is applied there. And also remember the five extra paint brushes you have on your hand. I don't mind using my fingers to just smudge paint when necessary. You can now pull off the um, the mask. And there you can see we're progressing at a good rate here. 
just as uniforms aged in the jungle, so too did webbing gear. And it, you can clearly see in these uh, these pictures that uh, canteen cover the uh, canvas quickly decolored into a sort of a beige color. And for this, I find hemp to be the correct shade. And uh, I now carefully apply this to all his webbing gear um, as the base color. Again, we'll be adding some shadow and highlight tones to this as well, but the base color here is hemp. And there you can see that's all the webbing gear that's now been painted a base color. So on to the next step. At this point, I like to apply a filter. This will uh, serve two purposes. One is to sort of enhance the, the, the existing color, but it also brings out the, uh, the molded detail, much like a wash will. Uh, so apply this, let it dry, and then just remove the excess. Next, I apply a lighter filter color, and I find this specific filter really helps the, the, the green tones to pop. And there we go, you can see it's already looking a lot different than, than when we started. All those different colors coming through, all the, uh, all the shadow tones nicely accentuated. The next step is very important. This is outlining, and I'll be using black and a very fine brush just to carefully paint in all the, uh, all the outlines on the webbing gear and uh, his pouches as well as where um, his sleeves were folded, things like that. Take your time with this. To add some highlight colors to the webbing gear, um, I now apply a lighter shade of the hemp color. Having done this, we can now move on to the next stage, and that is gluing his, um, his helmet and his hands in place. To do this, I'm using some gel type super glue. Uh, it's essential to use this type because this is a resin figure. Normal styrene glue will not do the job. And there you go. He's holding his helmet, it looks nice. The only thing is you'll notice a seam where the hand meets the arm. And uh, this we'll need to cover up somehow. And the solution I came up with is a tiny piece of wire uh, to make it look like a uh, paracord bracelet or any other type of uh, bracelet that soldiers wore in that era. This is done by bending the wire into a little half loop and um, then just placing that on the arm, cutting it a bit shorter and then placing it on the arm and gluing it in place. Tiny drop of super glue will do the job. Just position it correctly using your tweezers. And there you go. That bracelet now nicely covers up the seam between his arm and his hand. And there we go, this is the result. I'm quite happy with this guy. He'll be going on the back of the truck with the rest of his platoon. And uh, you'll see I also added some, some weathering to these boots and these uh, lower legs, just some sand brown. Guys, again, this is not the figure painting uh, uh, technique. This works for me. I find I deviate from this quite a lot, but the basic colors that I show you here are the ones that I normally use. There's a list of all the products that I used available from your local hobby store. And uh, again, follow me on Instagram if you're curious to see the rest of the build.